Bob Backish stepped down as CEO of Paramount yesterday, and Skydance also extended a final offer for uh, the studio as merger talks stalled on the possibility of a shareholder vote. Join us now is Rich uh, Greenfield, uh, Light Shed Partners, and uh, I'm not sure how to characterize it, Rich. Uh, it, it, reading about what it was worth five years ago and the deals that could have been done and were actually proposed, I think, is it did the Redstones, or Sherry Redstone, does it really go from $8 billion to about $2 billion? If she's lucky, it, it, it's more than succession. It almost sounds like a Shakespearean tragedy. I was going to say, Shakespearean tragedy sounds about right, Joe. I mean, look, part of the problem was this company took too long to merge, right? When they merged, Viacom and CBS took three years too long because of prolonged legal battles. And they missed the wave of consolidation. I, I think Sherry really wanted to be a consolidator. But by the time they merged, it was too late. And the company made one fatal mistake. Um, whether it's her fault, I think she certainly blames Bob Backish. But the, the fatal mistake this company made was in May of 2020. Uh, just as the pandemic took hold, they decided to try to be Netflix. And so they you know, went out and tried to create Paramount Plus and spent billions of dollars a year and unfortunately, that strained their balance sheet to a point that they just haven't been able to recover from. And I think very much why they're in the situation today, the sort of forced sale situation that they're struggling under, is all because of that mistake or misstep that they made um, not following the Sony strategy and just trying to be a content arms dealer. It would have been lower growth and lower margin, but they would not be in the situation they are today, meaning a forced sale. Um, if they had made that pivot back then. What's that sale finally look like? Did, when I mentioned succession, I guess it was, you know, when, when if you're trying to do a deal that's going to do uh, enrich the Redstone family much more than, the common, uh, than, a, than an average shareholder, that's what reminded me of, uh, I don't know, that, that I could have seen one of the, one of the, the, uh, the heirs to, you know, the, the head of... Uh, well, I can't even remember the name of the of the company anymore. You remember what was it at, at Succession? It was uh, in my mind. I need I need some prevention. You can't either. You're young. You ought to be able to remember. Uh, but but um, I, I don't know, Rich. Is that that's not going to fly, right? What what's finally well, going to happen? You mean Waystar? Look, can't. Yeah, Waystar. Royco. Waystar Royco. Ro right. Right. Exactly. You bring in Andrew for the short-term memory. Yeah, um, well, I think he looked it up. No, actually. I was actually. I, oh, I, I got to be honest. Okay. My, I got, Rich, I Googled. I got to be honest. Okay, my okay. My brain was not. I couldn't see at full you. Speed. I couldn't see you, Andrew. So I was just guessing that you Thank were the short-term. Thank you short for giving term, me credit. I didn't just. Yeah. 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 Um, but look, at the end of the day, what everyone forgets, you have no control. I, I don't. I, it's literally baffling to me why anyone is surprised that class B, meaning the non-voting P-A-R-A, para shareholders, they have no say. This is all about what National Amusements, which is owned and controlled by the Redstone family, wants to do. If they want to merge this thing with Skydance, they're going to merge it with Skydance. There was this crazy speculation yesterday about a majority of the minority vote that got hold in the press. There was never going to be a majority of the minority vote. Why would they do that? They have the ability to push the companies together, break them apart, sell them. That's what a control shareholder is able to do. Heck, look at, you know, there's plenty of companies that you look at in the tech space where there's a very powerful control shareholder. Um, you know, like these types of things happen all the time. You may not like some of the actions that a control shareholder takes, but that's the risk you take going into it. And so if she wants to merge this into Skydance, I think she's going to. You know, shareholders are going to get roughly 78 percent of, of their holdings in new co-stock. It'll be diluted by the inclusion of Skydance and the issuance of more equity. And you'll get somewhere around 22 percent of your stock um, being paid out in cash around $14 a share. If the you know, if the kind of speculation on what the pricing looks like is true. So, look, that's better. You're at least getting some cash. Two days ago, nobody was getting cash. Um, you know, in terms of public shareholders, only Sherry Redstone and National Amusements were getting cash. But I don't think at the end of the day, I still don't think shareholders are going to love the fact that this is not a takeout for all cash and that shareholders are being treated differently. But that's the risk you took going into it. Don't own the stock if you don't like that. The some of the metrics for, for Paramount for, for the streaming service, 
It seems like it's going pretty well, isn't it, Rich? I mean, uh, on a relative basis, is, is there hope? I mean, when you say relative basis, Joe, <laughs> you are multiple years in. You're still losing hundreds of millions of dollars a quarter. Right. This was the Super Bowl quarter, so this was a little bit unique on top of it. You certainly had some incremental advertising. You know, advertising, I think, was up somewhere like 14 percent and organically yeah. was down 9 percent. So, you know, a lot of things look better when you have special event programming. Um, you know, I think it, it, the, the reality is this is still a, a business where – even if they get Paramount Plus to profitability, I don't know what the ultimate value is. And that's look, that's what's going to change. Right. The Skydance merger, if it happens, I think the one thing that investors are not really paying enough attention to is they have no intention of shutting down Paramount Plus. Like that was the speculation of what you would do here is you would buy Paramount or even existing management. They would shut down or scale back Paramount Plus and cut a lot of costs, billions of costs, and they would gush cash. I think the, the what the plan is at Skydance, it sounds like as they take over Paramount, is they want to double, triple, quadruple down on Paramount Plus. They want to build Paramount Plus into a true Netflix competitor, much more like a Disney plus Hulu type combination. And so I think you're going to see a very, very big investment cycle um, from the new company, assuming the transaction happens. But again, cart before horse. This is going to take 12 to 18 months to close because you may have even a new administration. I don't know your view on the election, uh, Andrew Joe, but like this is going to take a while. 